Hi, how are you? This is Jilly Bling. I hope you're having a good day. I have a project to share with you, which I warn you right at the beginning, it's going to take a little bit to go through this. So the video might be a little bit long, but I want to make sure to cover everything so you have success. This is a magic card. So when you look at it, it's, it's a card, but, well, this one's a little stiff. Isn't that cool? And keep in mind, you can't expect perfection. This one is one of the first ones I did, and um, it's a little bit tight, but I think I found a way to make it run just a little bit smoother. But it, there's no mechanism in there, so you can't expect too much from paper. But this one here is the last one I did, and see how that runs smoother? So I'll show you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it both ways. There's just one extra step to make it this way. See how this one is a little bit thick? Where this one is just folded over. Folded over right there versus an extra score line on either side. So it's just a little bit thick like a book. That makes all the difference. So there's this one. And just a little bit inside. The um, flirty flamingo flowers match the flirty flamingo flower and like I said this was the next one I did and um, it runs quite a bit smoother and this is using designer paper the work of art um, product suite from the last catalog I know it's using retired paper but you don't have to use this you could use um, just like we do with these other samples but isn't that pretty just window sheet and um, a beautiful stamp. And to decorate it, I just used some products that I have. A lot of them are retired, but I hung on to them because I like them so much. Um, so whatever you have to decorate, however you do your cards, anything you have will work just fine. So... Um, today I'd like to do another one like this, but in grape, using the color and contour bundle. And the bundle includes a stamp set and then the dies. So I want to do one of these in purple. I showed you the one using Art Gallery. And then there was the one I'm using prized, I always say this word, prized flower. Peony? Peony? I don't know. Um, but these have some really great words and I like this little graphic image at the bottom We'll put that on the inside of today's project. Um, also for dyes um, More just for the flower and also this label for the words. Um, there's a little daisy. I'd like to put on today's um, project and then floral gallery for This version and then stitch rectangles are going to be used on all of the projects, and that's for the window. Okay, so let me put this one in view, because we'll be getting close to that. Um, you will definitely use stays on ink, and if you're going to do um, coloring with the blends, you'll use Memento. And then to decorate the inside of the card, it's primarily um, an accent color plus sand. Um, so, grape and sand. And I think I want to do some daisies on the front, so I'll leave out saffron and bumblebee. So, flirty petal, olive, and navy stamp pads. And those are for the other samples, so we probably won't be using those. So, I'll take all these because they'll be used soon. We'll be using this. Okay, so here we go. And I have templates. Um, templates will help out anyone who does this project box. I'll also take pictures of the templates and post them on my blog. And my blog is jillybling.com. And I'll post all the products used and paper cut sizes on my blog. Okay, so these are inside papers. It's crumb cake and basic white. This narrow paper is more for the track inside the mechanism. I'll show you about that. 
This paper is to stamp the flower on, part of the magic. The words, we could do words, let's do words. Let's have a little bit of success here, rather than all this direction. And you know, I went online and I looked for a magic card and I think I watched maybe seven or eight videos. And some of them I had to pause it and go back over it because I wasn't, I wasn't ready. Like if I have all these papers in front of me, um, I had to go back to see, now how do you put it together? So feel free to do that. And once again, sorry, I know it's going to be a little bit of a long video. Here for you now. That's nice. And let's cut that out. So when you look at these words, can you see how it's kind of um, cut and then it's also raised up embossed? So after it was cut, I took my bone folder and make sure it's in place. Just went around this inside edge and that's what made it look up, pop up like a panel. Can you see that right here? There you go. Um, and you could do that with any die that has a little inside edge. Sometimes the cut um, line is right up against the edge and you can't do it, but this one has that little edge. Therefore, I could do that fancy trick. Let's see. Let me see about some of these others. So this one, there is a little bit of an inside edge. The cut um, edge is right in the middle, so you could do it with this one too, but this one is really small. I don't know how well that would work. And you can do it with a flower too from work of art. Okay, so the words are done. Base paper is to be folded in half. That's easy. Okay, so this piece of crumb cake is for this little pocket. So let me pull out the template. We'll use this one in template in a minute. And I tried to write the directions on the templates just so they would be really handy. Okay, so this paper is the same size as this. First of all, score it at five inches. Put that right here. And like I said, I'll take pictures of all these. Okay, so five inches. Okay. Score at five inches. Number two, score and cut at one and a quarter. So what that means is we're going to score right here and then cut this piece right here. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over and one and a quarter is right here. So I'm going to score half right up to that five inch mark and then cut the other half right to that five inch mark. Okay, I'll flip it over, do the same on the other side, put it right here at one and a quarter, cut to five inches and score it. Okay, so for right now, I'll move the cutting tool. Okay, so now your paper should look like this. Let me see if you can see it. Put it down here. See how these pieces come up? And it's scored right through there. Okay, number three, remove flaps, cut with slight angle. So when you look on here, these are the flaps I'm going to be removing. And see how this is a little bit angled? Okay. So we're going to remove flaps. Slight angle, when I'm looking here, it's maybe about an eighth of an inch up from the score line. And I'll cut right here. Okay. 
Okay, so now it's kind of looks like a T. Let me make sure you can see that. Okay, see how it's a bit like a T? Okay, use rectangle die <clears throat> to die cut the window. So that just means put the rectangle die right here in the middle of this panel and run it through your machine. Okay, so there it is, ran through. And you can see I used washi tape just to hold it in place. And I didn't measure, I just set it in there trying to get this amount equal to that, equal to this. Oop, I haven't cut these little flaps. And you could throw away that extra paper. But this little window that we just cut out, we will want to hold on to that. The extra paper. Okay, so this can come out. So this perfect little window, hang on to that. We're going to use that for the other side of the pocket. Okay, we're done with the die. So now your paper should look like a T with a window cut in it. So let's use our bone folder to confirm all the folds. Okay, so this is the T. These are folded down. That goes up. So, there's a little bit of a problem. See how it's kind of bowing? So we need to make this a little bit more narrow. Let me get my next template. Here it is. Number five, trim tiny quantity from the edge cut off at center. So that means that I'm gonna just take off maybe a sixteenth of an inch from this plain panel right here. And on the template, I was cutting it and I just left, see that little bit right there? But that's what needs to be cut off from each side. So you could use your scissors or you could use the, um, the cutter, but I'm fine with scissors. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfectly straight because this is going to be hidden inside the um, the little mechanism card pocket. Okay, so that's the little bit that I just cut off, which is right here. And I'll do the same with the other side. Okay, so now those are the pieces I cut off. You could just see one of them is a little bit thicker than the other, but it, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So now this piece should fit in there and our little pocket is just as straight as can be. Folds up nicely. I do notice it's a little bit taller up here. You could trim that if you want. This panel is a little bit taller. Once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. My scissor cutting isn't perfect. But the success of your card does not need it to be perfect. Okay, so that's where we should be right now. Um, remember when I was showing you the pull-out mechanism? The first one, it was a little bit stiff. And then I mentioned an extra score line would make it smoother. So looking at this piece, see how there's a score line right here? I'm going to do a separate score line like a sixteenth of an inch away from this one, out closer to the flap, and that's going to make all the difference. Okay, so on my blades I have written ouch, and this one says ah. 
And I don't know how many times I've done ouch when I meant to do the scoring tool. So ho hopefully you don't mess up your little paper. Okay, so now lining this up. First of all, I want it to be flat, so it's flat against here. And, let's see, yeah, you can see. So here's the track for the cutting blade or the score tool. And I'm just lining this up about a sixteenth of an inch, which is like the thickness of my scissors. Just a little bit different. Okay, then I'm going to do the same with the other side. That's really close. I don't know that I wanted it that close. Okay, so now I'll do this other side. And I know some um, paper people who um, know their scores very well and they're like, you can't just flip that over. There's, there's a certain way to score, but in my world, just a little bit of scoring and fold it either way, that works well. Okay, so I'm looking at this. This is outright 16th, maybe closer to an eighth of an inch, and this is minuscule. I think I need to do this one again. Okay, so now that there's, oh, you could see it good on here. Can you see the two different score lines right there? So I'm going to try to acknowledge this second new score line. Now hold this up here in just a minute. But this makes all the difference with the movement of the, the magic card. Oh, that one's working just fine. Okay. Got a good feeling. Okay, so, can you see how um, it kind of made it look like the edge of a book with the two different score lines? And that will give the mechanism just a little extra room, which is all it takes. Night and day difference in the success of the card. Okay, so, tying, trim off tiny quantity from the edge. We did that. So next is to make the tracks. And the tracks are these little bits right here. So let me put this in here just, just so you could see. That's what I'm talking about, the tracks. So I am going to cut from the score line, from this score line, in about a quarter inch, cut a track, and then I'm going to stop leaving the paper natural, not cut, at about a quarter inch. And if you get it a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, that's okay. What the tracks um, accomplish, I've got this right here, is when you're pulling your card um, in and out of the pocket, you don't want it all to come out. So that's why we're going to make these little tracks. Um, I'll clarify that once we start working with the uh, acetate. Okay, so let's make these tracks. Once again, the score tool. And the tracks are going to go on this part of the, the pocket, the part without the window on it. Let's see, where can you see best? Here or up here? You can see better here. Okay, so I'm going to take this corner, look for a quarter of an inch, which is right there. And I'm going to use my blade. 
and I'm going to go up to this five inch score line and down preserving about a quarter of an inch. It's hard to tell from this angle. Let me see how far it goes down. That's good. Okay, so the cut I made was from right here, which is about a quarter inch, all the way up to the score line. And I'll do the same on the other side. I'm lining up my paper right here at a quarter inch. I'm going right up to the score line. Let's see how that looks before I move it. Um, I think it needs to go down just a little bit farther. Just a little bit further. Okay. So, the cuts I just made, let me get some paper so you can see it. The cuts I made See how it stops right about a quarter inch before the edge of the paper? And then this one goes right to the score line. Actually, I cut that one a little bit too much, but that's okay. And then the same with this other side. So we have our pocket almost done. It's looking good. Um, it's a template. So this narrow, long paper we're going to put right here on the piece with the track. It's going to sit right in here, right in between the tracks. And I'm checking it because if the paper is too wide, I don't want it to inhibit the tracks, which this is. So I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. I had all the papers cut correctly. So I'm trimming off just a sixteenth of an inch. But the goal is for this paper to set in here and not be in the way of the tracks. And it looks good right now. See where the track is? Maybe if I set that here. That's good. This size has a little room, extra room. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this down. Uh-oh, ran out, but I was expecting that. Stamp and seal, I need to get some more. It's a fancy old bag. It's too bad I'm going to throw it out. So with this project, you probably, I know there's a lot of liquid glue fans, and I am becoming a liquid glue fan, um, but this project you probably should use a dry adhesive just because if you get liquid glue in the wrong places, it kind of messes up your, your project. Okay, and I put that on crooked, but it's okay because the little window will cover it and make it look like it's perfect. My little tracks are still visible. You could tell I didn't cut this exactly straight, but that's okay. Okay, so the next step is to make the little pocket, the little um, half circle punch. And I'm using my one and a quarter circle punch, and I'm going to go through three layers. The top part of the window, the white insert, and the back side of the pocket. So I'll close those up. When you put your punch in here to punch it, you want to get somewhat close to your window, but you certainly don't want to go over your window. If you go over it too far, um, you'll mess up your, your window and kind of mess up the integrity of the card. So I can see I don't want to go there. So 
I'm going to go here. Then I'm looking, is this amount equal to that amount? I need to move it over a little bit. Okay. So these amounts are equal, and I'm not getting into the window part of the card. It's kind of hard to punch it. Going through three layers is not always easy. Okay, success. So that right there is the goal. Okay, let me get all these pieces out of the way. Okay, so do you want to decorate your little window on one of the samples? So are we done with this one? I think so. One of the samples, no decorating at all. The one I did last, I sponged it and I put the little freckles on it. In here, I sponged all the different layers and did the freckles. I think I want to do like this. Sponging and freckles. Freckles come from stamp set. Oh. Color and contour. Freckles. Freckles are good. I'm trying to make it look a little vintage-y. Okay, so here's a sample. I've got all this stuff going on. Okay, so freckles. Oh, you know, this one is nice too. And I'm gonna put that on the inside. Maybe I'll do this one on the pocket and freckles on the green. Okay, so to decorate the pocket, all I'll be decorating is this part here. I certainly don't want any ink on the white. And these pieces are going to be folded under. So with sand, I will do this pattern. Just for a little interest. And on my blog, I'll put pictures of everything, just if you want a little inspiration. As you can tell, my first one was very simple, and each one, it got a little fancier and fancier. I wish I had something to look at to get closer to fancy from the beginning. Okay, that looks good. And then, where is freckles? This one here can go on to... The green card base and not much of the green is shown just a little border and I'm going to do sponging too all in sand good enough okay so now for the sponging So today, this morning, Jennifer, Tim, and I, we got our second vaccine. So it's only been a few hours. Feeling great so far, but that might be because we stopped for coffee on the way home. But what a relief to get that done. First time, probably felt it. This time, I felt it. It's like, did, did you hit a blood vessel in there? Because the Band-Aid was full. I know, TMI. I think spongy makes everything, anything look better. Okay, I'm not going to get it on that white paper. That's that's for sure.
Okay, sponged enough. Okay, let's see, where are we on here? We have the pocket that's gonna go on here. Oh, and you know, looking at this down here, I see this little bit right down there of paper, and I don't like that. Um, that's why we cut at an angle when we did this cut, but I'm gonna cut off a little bit more from here. Maybe. Okay, let's see how that looks. Oh, much better. Okay, so this part is looking really good. So I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. Eventually this is gonna go on here. Here for you now. I have plans for the inside words that are gonna be great. And you know, placing the words is not as easy as you would think. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Okay, so the outside, we're getting getting ready, getting close to be done, being done. These are inside papers. That is easy as can be. So this is for the flower. Oh, I had to get a window sheet. Window sheet. Okay, so to stamp the flowers, I'm going to use, um, if I was coloring them in blends, I would definitely use Memento. But because I'm just going to be stamping, I could use Stays On or Memento, it doesn't matter. But you know, when I stamp using polymer stamps, I have better luck using Memento. So I'm just going to use Memento. And because it's polymer versus the red rubber, see the red rubber, it has foam. Great image. Don't need a little pad underneath it. Polymer, there's no foam. Therefore, I have my little stamp pad that's going gonna, gonna to help me. Just a little bit extra smush under there. Okay, memento. Stays on, we're going to need it for the window sheet. Memento is good for blends, but you could do this and stays on. It stays on, it dries so fast. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. And now I could color it in, but I know that when we stamp on the window sheet, it's going to take a few minutes to dry, so I'm going to do that next. And because it's window sheet, I need stays on, so I had to clear off the Memento ink on here. Okay, so this step, um, it's going to require a little bit of trimming, but it's very forgiving. So I have the window sheet and I'm going to place it on top of my white paper. Can you see the difference? You know what? If I put this underneath, I know you can see the difference. Okay, so there is my white paper, basic white, and the window sheet, I just want it um, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered because we're going to trim it. So, it stays on. And when you use stays on and polymer, you want to go quickly from ink pad to stamping because it dries almost instantly. And sometimes it's a little bit slick, so try to go down, straight down, gently. And I know, because this is polymer, it's probably going to stick to the window sheet, the stamp, which is fine. 
everything is sticking. So if it sticks, just let it stick and then kind of confirm that there's solid contact from the stamp to the window sheet. Okay, and so now when you go to remove it, don't just pull it because many times if the ink is still um, wet, it will smear it. So do your best to lift it straight up. <laughs> and if you were chatting while it was drying, it's really going to stick. But I still have a good image. If I wouldn't have waited so long and chat so long, it would come off more easy. But it did smear a little bit down at the bottom. But it's going to be just fine. Okay, so I'm going to set this off to the side, let it dry a bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to color my flower. Two-step stamping. No need for coloring. And this still has 40 Flamingo on it. And I'm going into Gorgeous Grape. Can you tell I just got my cleaner a little bit too watery? Okay, Gorgeous Grape. Oh, here's my, my note. Decorate color flower, leaves, sponge, do words and freckles. Okay. Grape. Voila, it's colored. Isn't that impressive? <laughs> and then to color the leaves, um, I had a hard time just leaving them like that, so I took a blend, olive dark, because the outside of the card, the base of it is olive, and I was trying to be abstract, where I just did swooshes of color and left it. I am so not an abstract person. I find it challenging. Okay, just leave it. Is this a leap? Sure. Okay, that's colored. So, this piece is done, and this piece is done. Is it dried? I hope so. So the next step is to take these, line them up, and when you line it up, it's like when you're at the um, optometrist office, and they say, which is better, one or two? We have to get it all lined up. And I know when I set this down to find my washi tape, it's going to get not lined up. So, maybe before you do it, have four pieces of washi tape ready. Washi tape started out, I used to use it on the front of the cards. It was all the trend. Now it's more a tool. Okay. So, get these lined up the best you can. And then put washi tape in the corners. Or you know what would bend better? Here. Put washi tape in the corners first. I think this is a better way. Okay, now get it lined up. Ooh, right there, that's good. And then attach it. Yeah. That's what happens when you do four of them. And whoo wee did I do this crooked. I thought I stamped on the acetate straight. Can you tell how crooked I got that? There's like an eighth of an inch here and three quarters of an inch there. But that's okay, it's gonna be trimmed. Okay, so now with your snips, and it's all lined up, stuck together, turn this over and trim the window sheet right against the white um, floral stamp. Okay. Is 
not smearing. Still in place. Looks good. Did I get that close enough? See, if I don't get it right up against there, I'm afraid that once it's in the pocket, I, I don't want it to shift. I don't want it to be a blurry image. That was like less than a 32nd of an inch. That was a tiny amount. I probably didn't need to do that. Don't we all strive for perfection though? Okay. Last side. Is it moving? Don't move. Okay. There it is. Two separate pieces that perfectly line up. Nice. Okay, take off the little extra washi tape. Okay. Go on, let go. So now we have our two pieces, window sheet and white paper, perfectly line up. So let's let's attach them permanently. So this piece, which is the stitched rectangle, the inside piece, right in the middle, using the same one and a quarter inch circle punch. And if you don't have one and a quarter, if you have a one inch, um, it's fine to do whatever size you have. Punch out a piece. Hold on to this. We're going to use that. Take your circle, fold it in half, and here we're going to apply um, dry adhesive all over the whole inside. Um, liquid glue won't work here because it won't hold on to the window sheet good enough unless you have some fancy liquid glue. Okay, so there is sticky that's gonna clear my fingerprints off. Ooh, that's really sticky, that's good. Get these lined up and put this right in the middle. Boy, this is really sticky, that's nice. then fold it over. Okay, they're secure. So the two pieces attached with a circle. And they're still lined up. When they're sitting here, it looks blurry, but when I hold them together, which is what the, um, the pocket will do, they're right in line. Okay, so next is take out a hole punch or if you have a crocodile from back in the day, use your crocodile. And on the crocodile, don't worry about most of it because it's very overwhelming. We are going to use, see these two sides? We're going to use the one with the big hole. This one has a little hole. This one has a big hole. And that's just because there's stuff in there. That We're going to use the big hole just because we're going to be putting ribbon through here. And the mechanism on your crocodile, when you squeeze it, see this part right here? It's coming to punch the hole for us. Okay, so hold your window closed and put the crop. When you go to do your hole punch, you'll want to have it, I would say in the center of it, but maybe up a little bit higher, a little bit closer to this edge. And that will help the image drop down inside the pocket just a little bit further. That looks good. 
And there it is. Well, it looks pretty much in the center, but it's just fine. Okay, so now for decorating. If you have any um, eyelets from back in the day, you could use your crop -it to do your eyelet right through there and then put ribbon. Or on these, I've been using a fancy brad. So any brads you have, this is a good time to use them. Or just ribbon, just ribbon is fine too. And I should have had a plan before I started this about using, I'm gonna use this brad. And I wanna use some purple I think, but I kind of like the vintagey antique. I have this one. Oh, that's kind of fun. Maybe I'll do this and vintagey because we're doing all the sponging and the little freckles and vintage is good. Oh, this is brand new. I picked this one out just because it's the perfect color. It's retired, but it's grape. Gotta love grape. Hope I need to get a pin. Those, that looks nice next to it. Okay, so just a little bit of a pull amount. And then a little bit of vintage amount. Oops. Okay. And where's that brat? See it coming together? This, should I hold them together with twine or? Let's do both. Maybe. Right there. Okay, so this is this one is kind of overkill. Doing doing lots of stuff on here. So I'm just gonna tie it, oh, maybe a bow, I'll do a bow. So because I'm gonna do a bow, I'll need a little bit more. Okay, so, oh, I have a little trick on here. Let me find the first one. The first one, the pull, just as what we did, I punched it all the way through, put the ribbon through, then put the brad through to kind of cover it up. But you could see the little brad feet back here. I don't like that. So the next one was this one. And I got a little smart on it. And I'm gonna share with you this so you could be smart. Boy, this one is tight. You can't see the feet. Can't see the hole. You have to see the hole because of the, the ribbon going through. But I'll show you how to do that. And the last one that I did this morning, oh, you could see it all. Well, I like it better when you can't. So let's, let's do a, you can't see it through it. Okay, so we're gonna start with the ribbon. So, like I said, this video, I know it's taken way too long. I'm not even going to look at how long it's taken. Just because you need all these little details. And I know it's a lot that I'm just throwing in your lap, but you could get it. Just watch it again. And if you can, hit the pause button or the backup button. Why isn't that pretty? Who knew? Okay, and these, what am I doing a bow? It looks like a different color of purple, but that's okay. It's gonna look good. Okay, I'll tie it in a knot. Maybe I'm gonna do like a full on knot and then I'll do the bow. I don't want it to come, Come undone. Okay. I'm gonna fluff it up and make it all look a little pretty.
This is a study in neutrals and purples. <gasps> oh, I like that. Okay, so trim these ends. Ooh, okay, all different directions they will be. I can do vintage. Before living here, we had a Victorian house. That was vintage everything. Look at that. Fancy, fancy. Okay. Oh, oh, the brad. Well, heck. So the brad I was supposed to put through, lift this up, put the brad through, close it, then do the ribbon. Well, once again, we will have the brad in here, and you can see the feet. Whoops. Well, the people are going to be so wowed by the magic of the card that hopefully they won't notice. And I'm trying to push the brad feet beyond flat because I don't want them to be a weapon. Okay, I like that. And that's where the magic is going to happen. Okay, this we'll use at the end. Let's get these other pieces. This is inside. So, onto the pocket. To do the pocket, take this piece right here, put your thumb in between the window sheet and the colored image. In here, oh, hold on, one other step. On this little template, see these little slits? We're gonna cut those, and that's just on the white paper, not on the window sheet. So, to cut those slits, you cut up a quarter inch and in a quarter inch, and it doesn't have to be perfect. So I just did the cuts right here and here. See the cuts right there? Just a little bit. Okay, so now that the cuts are done, now we'll separate these. And the pretty flowers, oh, I wanted to do some decorating on here. Boy, I'm just getting ahead of myself. Okay, let's do, let's see if we could squeeze in a little decorating. I don't think that I could take all that apart. I kind of don't want to, but I'm going to try to squeeze in some decorating. This is all done in sand. And then I want some words. I think I had some picked out. My thoughts are with you. I'm going to stamp off and just put those all over on here too. And I'm going to do sponging too. Looking vintagey. Okay, so now the sponging. Sorry about that. See, I know you're watching it the first time through, so you'll do yours just right. But if not, this is a way to fix it. Resilient window sheet. It's 
vintagey. Oh, now I kind of want to add freckles. Just a little bit more. Oh, that's good. Okay, enough. Enough vintagey. Okay, back to where we were. So, have this, have that, and eventually it's going to go like this, but I want to put these little recently cut slits into the tracks. Now hold this up close in just a minute. Okay, so see the track? And I put the little white slits right in through there. So the image right now is, if this is the whole pocket, the image is right back here. Okay, so before I close it up, I'm going to just check the movement of it. Magic! See, that moves just fine. And if you push it down kind of far, it's kind of locking into place. But yeah, this one moves really nice. Okay, so before we put it together, kind of get it lined up. And close this part. Now, once again, check the movement again. Maybe. I might have pushed it down too far. Oh, here we go. There it is. Oh, this one moves nice. I think these little side extra, the, the book edges, that gives it all the room it needs to slide. And it's by no means is it ball bearings and mechanism. It's just sliding in the paper. So you can't expect too much from it, but it works just fine. Okay, so now that you've got your pocket done and your magicness is inside of your pocket. Turn it over and it's okay that there's a gap. But this piece right here, we're going to attach there. And you don't want to cinch it in, otherwise the movement will be poor. Um, don't really want to open it up either, just where it naturally falls. I'm going to put adhesive on this um, stitched rectangle panel, making sure none of my adhesive gets near the white. If anything touches the white, your um, magic card is not going to be magic. So, on here, I'll put one strip, and I'm inclined to put a second strip, but I don't want it to touch the white. So I think I'm just going to do the one strip, put it in the center. If it's down a little low, that's okay. Up high, it's okay. Just in the center, and I have my adhesive right here and here. I know it's not touching the white. Okay, so now that's done, once again, check the magic, and it's it's just fine. Okay. Are you seeing it start to come come to movement, come to see how it goes? Okay, so this is going to go here. My words, once again, they can't touch the window. If they touch the window, your card is not going to be able to move. <laughs> so the other day, when I was working on this for the first time, this card took me two days to figure out after watching all those videos. But Tony came home for lunch, and I said, oh, look, look at this. And which one was it? It was this one right here. And he's like, oh, okay. And I said, don't you like it? And he's like, well, I don't know. And I said, what do you think about that? But it wasn't moving. Because I had dimensionals under here, under the words. They were sticking to the window sheet. If the window sheet doesn't move, you can see the window sheet moving, the card doesn't work. So I was pulling on it and pulling on it, and I got it all bowed ugh, until I realized, yeah, no dimensionals on the window sheet. Okay, with all that said, this is going to go here. Oh, and I wanted to do some of those little yellow daisies. And 
I have the stamps here. And I want to put the daisies down along the side just to decorate the front a little. This one is decorated mostly just with ribbon. This is the second card, mostly ribbon. Third card with a flower. That looks good. Okay, so daisies I'm going to use bumblebee and saffron. And I have some paper, extra paper. And you know, I'm going to do three of them. I probably should have planned this a little bit better, but this way you can catch up. Daisies, three daisies. Bumblebee outside. Okay, I'll do one more just because somebody will like to have an extra daisy. Or maybe it wants to go on the inside. Bumblebee and saffron inside. Oh, I have to line these up. Maybe. Do you think it matters? Ooh. I think it goes right like that. I don't know if I like that. I think I like them better just as white. White daisies. White daisies it will be. Okay. So they're done in bumblebee. So I'm going to color in the center with daffodil. Just to, let me see how dark that is. The center is colored and that's it. Okay, so there is a die for the daisies. Whenever you're die cutting, if you can, separate your pieces just because when you run them through your machine, if you run all three of them through at one time, in the end, they end up having all kinds of lovely texture on them, which we don't really want. Boy, I know that there's an easy way to do this. But you know, if I have these problems, you think and everyone will. Getting kind of close to giving up. Okay. And you can also hand cut your daisies. I didn't want to do that on all three of them. Try to figure it out. I'm going to have these daisies kind of covering each other, so it doesn't have to be perfect. This one is going to be the best out of all of them. One daisy.
should figure out how to do that die. I'll figure it out. Okay, so two in this one, I know I'll need to cut out part of it, but because a lot of them are going to be overlapping, I might need that extra support because we could put adhesive only on the frame of the front. So I'm going to cut out maybe half of this and that's it. It'll make sense in a minute. 30 seconds. Okay, so to put this together, I'm thinking this can go here, this one could go here, this could go over here, and that can go there. It's kind of cute. It's very happy. And then for a ribbon, I think I'm going to put a big bow right here in the middle. Okay, so once again, you have to be a little bit careful with where you put the adhesive because we don't want it touching the window sheet. But I know it's going to go up here. Here, there. You know what? Because there's no ribbon tying around the pocket, I'm going to attach the pocket. I have some sticky right there. So to attach the pocket, um, go around the outside edges as close as you can to the edge because a lot of pull is going to um, happen, especially along the edges. And make sure not to get any adhesive on the white. The white is what has movement. You can put it all over on this stitch rectangle little panel and across the bottom. Maybe not down here so much. Okay, oops. So, not on the edge. So I have adhesive here and here and then on the panel. Nothing touching the white. And I'm putting this a little bit lower than I normally would just because I want to allow room for the pull. Let's see how it works. Ooh, that's magic. Okay, so now back to decorating. This is going to go over here. The daisies are going to go, you know, hold on. I had a plan, but I'm not exactly sure how it will work, so... This one, right about here. I don't want it off of the edge of the card. I want it to fit in the envelope. That one there. This one here. On top is nice. Oh, okay, maybe down a little bit so the words have room. Or the words could go on top. Okay, so just like that, that's the plan. So I'll put adhesive right here because that's going to go over the daisy. And then adhesive over on here. That's for the words.
If I didn't get so fancy, this would be a lot easier. Sorry about that. Can't help it sometimes. Oh, I put adhesive way up there. I might have to get my remover. Okay, kind of covered up that one, but that, that's okay. So then I will put, let me first make sure it still works. Yeah. And then I'll put a, a bow right on here. I think I'll do the bow in the, the lace. Just a regular bow. Just a little pretty thing. I don't want it too big. And then, you know, to keep up with the, the vintage I'm going to take some linen thread. a little bit of it and put it down here and some glue dots oh those are super tiny hold on Linen thread, fold it in half, glue dot right in the middle underneath the bow. And the bow, let me trim these ends. Not good that the bow isn't sticking to it. Hopefully that will hold in place. Okay. Here for you. Magic. And see how the stoppers are working? Okay. Oh, I like how the outside came out. So now for the inside here for you and better days ahead. I like that with maybe just the daisy. Okay, so and better days ahead will go into grape. Well, that's pretty. And then the daisies are going to go in. What I do those in bumblebee with a little bit of marker. Bumblebee daisies. No cutting out required. Okay. 
that happy. Okay, daisies are done. Now a little vintagey, which will be in sand. This fancy shape. Stamp off. And dots. and sponging. Okay, I think we've completed this project. Like I said, it takes a little bit longer, but I think once you get the concept down, um, if you were to do a second one, I think it would go much faster. Okay, so this will go on the inside. It's a really nice stamp. The words, it's really pretty. What do you think? It's a masterpiece. Ah, oh, thank you for tuning in. Um, for paper sizes, products used, everything will be on my blog, julybling.com. I'll list all the products I used. And if you can, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And um, there's that little bell. Hit the notifications too. Um, and then whenever a video is posted, you'll get the video right away. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.